Hello friends, this is Seher from Easy Beasy and the topic that we are going to discuss today is called as metabolism. The word metabolism is derived from a Greek word and that means change. So that basically refers to the series of chemical reactions that occur within the living organism in order to sustain life. Now there are three different steps in it. The first step is the conversion of food to energy to run the cellular processes. Then this food in the small parts will convert itself into the building blocks and will become the part of our proteins, our lipids, our nucleic acids and our carbohydrates. And the rest of the thing that is not necessary in our body will get eliminated from our body in the form of carbon dioxide, water, heat and waste products. Now this process starts with the digestive system that is present in our body in order to convert large molecules of food into small particles that can be absorbed by the cells where these molecules will further metabolize into three different ways. So the first way is that this glucose, amino acid and fatty acids will release energy in the form of ADP and heat energy and then convert themselves into the building blocks of cells. Then these building blocks will get incorporated in our proteins, RNAs, DNAs, fats and glycogen. By this way, we can grow ourselves from toddler to an adult we can fertilize an egg and can recognize the process of pregnancy. We can run all the different systems that are present within our body. That includes skeletal system, respiratory system, circulatory system, excretory system, nervous system, and many more. This metabolism is not an easy process. It involves millions and millions of reactions. As you can see in this picture, they are represented beautifully. Now you can see that it is kind of a chip that is present within the computers, having a lot of series of reactions, having metabolism of complex lipid here, carbohydrate metabolism here, lipid metabolism here, energy metabolism here, amino acid metabolism here, and many more. And all these reactions and pathways that comes under the category of metabolism is called as metabolic pathways. Now these metabolic pathways can be present in three different ways. They can either be present in a linear form in which the first product becomes the reactant of the next product where A can transform itself into B and B will transform into C. It can present in circular form as you can see in this picture which is also included in the citric acid cycle that A is making B, B is making C, C is making D, D is making E, and E is again making B. So it is a circular form. And then we have the spiral way for generating energy inside the cell. Other than that, the reactions, mostly in the linear reactions, when one product becomes the reactant of the next product, then these type of reactions come under the category of coupled reactions. Now these reactions are quite slow in the process because they have higher activation energy. So in order to remove this problem, we need enzymes because enzymes lower the activation energy and proceed the reaction in the given time. As you can see in this picture, now this is a beautiful graph showing the reaction with and without the enzyme. On the y-axis we have energy and on the x-axis we have reaction. Now as you can see if we don't have the enzyme then the activation energy is quite high and it is represented by the red line here. But with the help of enzyme it will lower this activation energy which is represented by this blue line here. Let's take an example how these enzymes are going to work. So this is a reactant and this reactant has the enzyme called as pyruvate kinase. Now this enzyme have the reactants that are 
phosphonyl pyruvate and ADP. Now this phosphonyl pyruvate needs to shift this phosphate group to ADP, converting them into ATP. So this phosphonyl pyruvate will convert itself into pyruvate and ADP will convert itself into ATP. And these type of reactions are called as substrate level phosphorylation. Now, metabolism have two different types. One is called as catabolism and one is called as anabolism. Catabolism is basically a spontaneous reaction in which a polymer converts itself into monomer, releasing energy. If we look at the graph of catabolism, we can see that the energy present in the reactants are higher than the energy present in the product. In this graph, the Gibbs free energy is on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. These dotted gray lines are representing the energy present in the product and the energy present in the reactant. So the energy that are present in the reactants are higher than the product. So after the reaction is going to get complete itself, the excess amount of energy will get released from this reaction. So this reaction is a spontaneous reaction or exergonic reaction. Next is anabolism. Anabolism is quite the opposite of catabolism in which we have monomers in the substrate level and we require energy in order to complete this process and convert these monomers into polymers. In anabolism, if we look at the graph, we can see that the reactants have low Gibbs free energy and the product have high Gibbs free energy. So in order to provide that energy, this energy will be used in the form of ATP. So in this reaction, this carbon dioxide and water with the help of the sunlight will convert themselves into glucose and oxygen. So this is the photosynthesis reaction occurring inside the plants. So these type of reactions are non-spontaneous reactions or endergonic reactions. Now as we discuss catabolism and anabolism, there are few things or few molecules that basically connects the catabolism with anabolism. And the first molecule that are going to enter in this category is ATP. Now ATP is used to shuttle the chemical energy from catabolism to anabolism. As you can see in this picture, large molecules by the process of catabolism will convert themselves into small molecule. By this way, it will release energy. This energy is required to convert ADP and inorganic phosphate to ATP. Now this ATP has energy and it will attach itself with anabolism, converting these small molecules into large molecule and convert itself back into ADP plus inorganic phosphate group. So by this way, ATP is going to couple the spontaneous reaction with the phosphorylation of ADP, that is the adenosine diphosphate. And then the non-spontaneous reaction is going to couple itself with the hydrolysis of ATP. Make sense? Okay. The next molecules that are going to couple catabolism with anabolism are coenzymes. And they are going to couple them by oxidizing and reducing themselves. Now what they're going to do is they will shuttle energy from the favorable oxidations that take place in catabolism to unfavorable reductions that take place in anabolism. Now let's discuss these coenzymes separately that how they are going to do it. For oxidation and reduction, we have some categories that are going to determine whether a compound is oxidized or reduced. For that, if a compound is going to get oxidized, it will lose electron or it will lose hydrogen or it will gain oxygen. In order to reduce a compound, that compound needs to gain electron 
or it needs to gain hydrogen or it needs to lose oxygen. Now in this reaction, this is a reaction of organic molecule with FeD plus 2. Now this organic molecule is going to lose hydrogen and electron. In this picture, hydrogen is represented by blue circles and electron is represented by pink circles here. So this FeD plus 2 will gain these hydrogens and electrons and will reduce itself into FADH2. So FADH2 is the reduced form of FAD plus 2. If we talk about NAD coenzyme, in this reaction, this organic molecule is again going to lose their hydrogen and electrons. Now this NAD is only going to have one hydrogen but it will take both electrons from this molecule and will reduce itself into NADH molecule. So as you can see in this picture, it is going to gain one hydrogen with two electrons here and one hydrogen is going to get released in the form of H+. Make sense? Now NADH is the reduced form of NAD+. By these oxidations and reductions, they are going to couple the reactions of catabolism with the reactions of anabolism. Now let's see some examples of catabolic reactions. Now catabolic reactions include respiration in which glucose plus oxygen will convert itself into carbon dioxide, water and energy. It will also include glycolysis, which is also the first step of cellular respiration. And the ethanol fermentation also comes under the category of catabolic reactions. Now these reactions are not as simple as it seems. Let's take an example of this plant respiration. Now in this respiration, we have several different type of reactions here. And if we just look at glycolysis, glycolysis have further more steps in it. And at some point, it will take energy in order to proceed the reaction. But in the end, it will release more energy. And the net ATP will consider this reaction as catabolic reaction. Let's see the examples of anabolic reactions. So the reactions that come under the category of anabolism are photosynthesis, gluconeogenesis, nucleotide synthesis. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye for now.